Hi, Jay. My mate, Jules. Fancy you. Please don't. Look, Cass. It's not even funny now. Let me just get his number. Open the door. Just, I've rung an ambulance. We've got other people on the route to help, okay? Please, just look straight at me for a second. Three vehicles have been involved. Right. Two people in the vehicle there. I can't get any response out of them. The ones in the front or the ones in the front?
your mom and dad. Words cannot express how sorry I am for letting you both down. You raised me well. You taught me to be smarter than this. You warned me during all those hours of driving practice not to drive distracted, but I didn't listen. I made the choice to drive with distractions, and it cost me all that. It cost me my life. Mom, Dad, I will always love you and be watching over you, but I need you to do something for me. Warn others about the dangers of distracted driving. Tell them to turn off their cell phones before driving starting September 17th as part of 17's two-second turn-off day. It takes two seconds to turn off a cell phone, but less than two seconds of distracted driving to get in a fatal crash. I don't want anyone to go through what I put you through. All the pain, the sorrow, the grief, the wishing that you could have prevented all this from happening. I may be gone now, but please don't let this happen to anyone else. Discourage distractive driving. Love you both dearly, your beloved daughter. We've all seen the warnings and heard the message countless times not to text or talk while driving. But for many adults and many more teenagers, the temptation to multitask is often too great. On the computer, on their cell phone, they're texting, they're instant messaging, they're posting Instagrams, they're Twittering. Seemingly small distractions, but the doctors at Borges Hospital's Level 1 Trauma Center know how quickly those small distractions can become a big problem. So about 90% of our patients are from blunt trauma, which in most cases is from automobile accidents. Um, and that applies probably to both hospitals. And the, the number that are from distracted driving is relatively high because if you think of it, Anytime somebody's blown through a stop sign, they got distracted somehow. One driver's decision to take his eyes off the road for just seconds forever changed the lives of one New Jersey family. 21-year-old Casey Feldman was killed as a pedestrian in 2009. I think of Casey lying on the roadway after her accident, and when the police officer asked her how it occurred, she said, I want my mom, and I wasn't there to comfort her in those last moments. The young woman's death has left its mark on her friends and family and inspired many of them to change their driving habits. And it just it made me realize that that could have easily have been me, that could have been my sister, it could have been anybody. Now, doctors at Borges and local educators are hoping sharing Casey's story will change the habits of local youth. They're teaming up to prevent faces of distracted driving at as many local high schools as possible. Because even though they've heard it before, educators and health care providers know all too well, it always helps to hear it again. And we can't just do it once. We know people learn by repetition. So whatever we teach them today, we need to reinforce it tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And then a few months later, we need to remind them again. You know, like smoking, this isn't one intervention or something you learn on Thursday and change your behavior on Friday, or at least everybody does. It's sort of a, a, a change of attitudes over time. And we hope that this particular piece and the educational programs that we're trying to put on in the schools can start to affect that. For Doc Talk, Marcy Koberger, News Channel 3. Mission is all that's going on there. Now, Donna, you got quite the vent today. It sounds like what's going on with you. Well, I wanted to voice my opinion on something that's been bothering me for a really long time. Okay. Um, I, I tried writing the newspaper and contacting uh, TV stations, but nobody seems to want to play with this. So that's why I'm calling you guys. Okay, what's, the, um, what's the issue? Well, <clears throat> over the past few years, I've been involved in three separate car accidents involving deer. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the population and everything. Um, each of these incidents, they've occurred shortly after I saw a deer crossing sign on the highway. Well, my frustration is that Minnesota and North Dakota Departments of Transportation would allow these deer crossings to be in such high traffic areas. I mean, I've even seen them on the interstate. Why are we mm -hmm. encouraging deer across at the interstate. I don't get it. That's such a high traffic area. 
I mean, Are you, you know, I understand that deer are wild <laughs> animals and they need to travel across the streets occasionally to survive and, you know, of course, to find food. But um, it seems to me that it's so irresponsible of us to allow these deer crossings to be in areas where these deer are so likely to be struck by oncoming traffic. I mean, wouldn't you agree? Um, I mean, it's, it's just, I mean, you think they would put deer crossings maybe, you know, in, you know, smaller towns, maybe during a, like at a, at a school crossing, that's, would, it would be a safer place for them to, to cross, Wait. you know, put the deer crossing sign. You know, deer crossings aren't telling deer that it's safe to cross there. It's just more of like an alert for drivers so they know it's like a high deer population. The government put the deer crossings there. They can direct the deer population anywhere they want to by moving that deer crossing sign. I mean, you know, why in the world would they place it on the highway or the interstate? You know, I mean, God, there are so many other places I can think of than put the deer crossing signs on, on busy highways right. and interstates. You seem to be under the misunderstanding that the deer are somehow attracted to the deer crossing sign. Well, well, yeah, the deer crossing sign is there to allow the deer to know that's where they need to cross. Right. And all these car accidents you had involved a deer after you saw a deer crossing sign. Exactly. I, I, mean, I, I, I mean, I'm trying to watch out for the deer, but... I mean, I'm, you know, speed limit's 55, 65. How am I supposed to, you know, you can't break really quick if, you you know, if the deer just is crossing in that deer crossing area. So you'd like to see these signs move somewhere safer? <laughs> right. If we, yeah, if we can move them, like, don't put deer crossing signs on the interstate or, or freeways. You know, put them in uh, lower traffic areas. You know, somewhere where the speed limit's, you know, a lot lower uh-huh. you know maybe small towns i don't know i think school crossings is a good idea well listen we will um yeah i mean you say you've tried to contact quite a few people about this right yeah i i wrote like at least three or four letters and we you know, will tried. spread the word okay we will try to kind of help you raise some awareness for this issue okay oh thank you we need to move those deer crossing signs we appreciate your comment this morning all right thanks Bye. Two three seven hits. Seen text four nine three three zero. Ladies and gentlemen of the Playhouse family, now after having received well over one million views on YouTube, may we welcome back to the show Fargo's own Donovan Beardley. Hi. How hey. are you? Hi. Hi. I'm very well. How are you guys? We're good, but girl, you famous. Oh my goodness. I, I can't believe all this hubbub. Holy cow. Um, well, first of all, um, can I just say thank you to you three wonderful human beings for being so nice to me the last time I was on the radio with you? <laughs> you thank are you. welcome. Now, um, how, is the, how are things now? Just give us, let us know how your life is, because I don't know if you realize you're well into a, over a million views on YouTube. I know. Oh my gosh. I mean... Gee whiz, um, from that one phone call, I mean, you guys must have had to, like, totally tie your giggle bones down, you know, with that last call. Um, my life, uh, wow, um, it's, it's been interesting, almost kind of like a, a carny ride in an odd way. <laughs> to clarify, you are uh, now aware deer crossing signs, their purpose is to alert drivers of deer, yes? Yes, yeah, and now that I've had the reasoning for the deer crossing signs, Explain to me. Um, I just have to say that I, I feel incredibly stupid. I mean, I mean, honestly, I mean, just on my defense, I had no clue that these signs were for us. I mean, because I never really thought about it enough to realize that I was kind of being ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, and in my defense, you know, I grew up in a in a really small North Dakota town. You know, and I'm a passionate Irish woman. I, an extreme love for animals, mm-hmm. but, you know, where I lived um, and grew up, I was pretty isolated, so until my husband husband brought me to Fargo about three years ago or so, and I started seeing all these deer crossing signs, you know? Well, and obviously when we were talking to you, we were, we were trying to be nice, we tried to kind of explain things, but once we got off the phone with you and people started calling in, 
what kind of happened when you heard that? Oh my gosh. Um, I mean, honestly, literally, um, when I got off the phone with you guys, my coworkers and, and my family, they were texting me after this. And, you know, I heard about all your phone calls. Holy cow, you guys must have been, like, inundated. Uh, mm-hmm. um, people making fun of me. And, and, then, and then my phone wouldn't stop ringing for, like, almost two days. It was crazy. I couldn't believe it. So have you been getting constant attention since you've been on our show? Um, actually, you know, after a while, um, it died down for a couple weeks um, after I was talking to you guys on the radio. But then just a few days ago, I started getting email about the YouTube links from people with the podcast that you had posted on your website. Well, that had to be um, nice, too, to know that it's just getting spread all over the world, huh? Yeah, yeah. In one respect, yeah, kind of, kind of. <laughs> um, you know, part of me you now has decided to stand up and just own this like a modern woman, you know? And, you know, I have people coming up to me and saying, oh, my God, are you Donna, dear lady? And, you know, are you that lady from Y94? And, you know, I'm I, after a while, I was at the point of saying, yes, that's me. I'm Donna, the dear lady. So I'm just, you know, laughing it off and rolling with it, plain and simple. But you know what? What's that? The one thing that's been kind of rough um, is some neighborhood children have been, you know, keeping printouts of deer crossing signs and shoving them in my mailbox. I mean, this has been going on for like the past week or so. Um, um, so that's, that's kind of frustrating. Um, but, you know, kids will be kids, you know, and kind of letting things roll off my shoulders, tittering. And then my coworkers have been, been re- relentless and, you know, patients have been teasing me, um, you know, because I, I work at, as a receptionist at, at a clinic here in Fargo, you know, I thought things were dying down a, a little bit until we woke up this morning and found like a, a plastic life size deer in our lawn next to one of those highway signs planted <laughs> in our front yard. So, I mean, Carmody Christ, people. I get it now. Well, listen, Donna, I mean, the first call was very fun for us. Uh, you seem to be taking it in good spirits, and we certainly appreciate you calling in. And you know, I'm sorry that this is. It to some extent maybe negatively affected your life, but we'll do our best to maybe help it calm down here. It will blow over, I promise. You know, thank you so much. That's so sweet. Just, you know, I'm a concerned woman, as of, you know, when it comes to certain subject matters. And honestly, you know, I absolutely learned a, a good lesson out of the whole experience, if anything else. Um, but, you know, I would kind of ask... Um, if I can ask people to stop sharing the links of our Herfield conversation, <laughs> you know, that... You know, that would be kind of nice. You know, I really want the recording of my first call to kind of go away soon. Well, I mean, over a million people have seen it. How many people are left? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I guess. I don't know how many people are in the world. So. <laughs> well, Donna, I, I really do appreciate that you can kind of take the title Donna the Dear Lady and own that. I think we, if nothing else, we owe you a T-shirt. A Donna the Dear Lady T-shirt. We will make it and design it ourselves. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that, that's so sweet of you guys. You're so sweet. That, that's very nice of you. Thanks for being so nice to me. You're famous. You're international. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now and forever. Bye.